a rather nasty looking integral involving Hermit polynomials here. The question is, can you use the Rodriguez representation of the Hermit polynomials to show that this integral reduces to zero? Pause the video and have a go. Let's bring in the Rodriguez representation. So our integral becomes an integral from zero to infinity x to the power of m exponential minus x squared. And then we can replace the Hermit polynomial of order n by minus one to the power of n exponential x squared. And then we take the derivative with respect to x n times of the exponential minus x squared dx. Good news is that exponential minus x squared and exponential plus x squared cancel. So this uh, simplifies a little bit. And then the question is how we're going to tackle this integral now. So you see we have some factor, this factor over here, of which it's pretty straightforward to calculate the integral. And then we have another factor over here. Now this obviously suggests the technique of integration by parts. So pause the video and see if this helps in this case. So let's use integration by parts, u and dv. So what is u and what is dv? Now obviously it makes sense to pick this here for dv because we know what v is. It's just integrating this thing, which will be taking the derivative not n times, but n minus 1 times. So that's pretty easy. And then the other part is going to be u. Okay, let's proceed. So what we have then is u times v. So u is x to the power of m minus 1 to the power of n. So this is for u. And then for v, it's taking this derivative, as I already mentioned, and minus one times as opposed to n times exponential minus x squared and then evaluating this between plus and minus infinity. That's the first term. Let's proceed to the second term. That's going to be minus uh, the integral of v du. So we take the derivative of u, so minus one to the power of n and then taking the derivative of x to the power of m, that's going to be m x to the power of m minus 1. And then we shouldn't forget v, of course, which is the n minus 1 dx n minus 1 of exponential minus x squared dx. Is this a simplification? Let's have a look at this first term over here. So we need to calculate number of derivatives here of uh, exponential minus x squared. So this looks a little bit daunting, uh, but don't forget that every time you take the derivative of something involving a factor which includes this exponential, is that this exponential will always be there. So just for fun, if you're not convinced, uh, try to calculate this a number of times. And the end result will be that you have a scary looking polynomial times this exponential. So the complex exponential, sorry, this exponential rather, will be there in any term of this uh, derivative here. And that's important because we need to evaluate that at minus infinity and at plus infinity. So therefore, it doesn't really matter what that uh, polynomial is, thanks to this exponential, that will always be zero. So this first term just vanishes. And that's, of course, um, good news. So let's take stock. Um, so after we've applied um, integration by parts one time, we end up with an integral which is proportional to, and then I'm not going to worry about these prefactors here because we need to show that the result is zero. So let, let's forget about those. So we have an integral proportional to here, minus infinity plus infinity x, m minus 1 dn minus 1 dx n minus 1 exponential minus x squared dx. So this is what we have 
after we apply integration by parts just one time. Now pause the video and see what happens if you apply integration by parts more than one time and see if that helps you to show that this integral is indeed zero. So if we do integration by parts once, you see that the result is that we have here a minus one and also here a minus one. Now obviously this means that if we do this m times, that then our integral will become proportional to an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, x to the m minus m, the n minus m, the x n minus m exponential minus x squared dx. And that's an important milestone because after m times you notice that we have here x to the power of zero. So now this thing drops out and we only have the integral of a derivative here. That's of course very simple to calculate. That's going to become here d n minus m minus 1, so we reduce the order of the derivative minus 1, so n minus m minus 1, uh, of our exponential evaluated between minus infinity and plus uh, infinity. This should be an m, obviously. And now the same thing is true. We have here a uh, exponential minus x squared. So every time we take the derivative, we will have some prefactors which will form a polynomial, but every term will have this exponential minus x squared present. So if we evaluate this either at minus infinity or at plus infinity, the end result is always zero. So this shows that the integral is um, zero. There's some small details we need to take care of. Um, first of all, this order of the uh, derivative here, we should make sure that we do not take a derivative minus two times, for example, that would not make any sense. So we need to have that n minus m uh, minus one, that that is a positive number, which obviously means that m should be smaller than or equal to um, n minus one which is exactly, if you look back at our question here, uh, which is exactly this condition here. So that condition is there for a very good reason. By the way, it's also quite easy to see that the whole thing really breaks down in case n is equal to m. So in that case, it's, uh, it's not working um, because if we go, go back to what we have here, in that case, we would have an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of taking the derivative zero times, if you can write it like that. So that's basically not taking the derivative at all. So what we have here is an integral of exponential minus x squared dx, which we know from a different exercise, for example, that this is the square root of pi, which is very much non-zero. So indeed, it shows you that this condition here is very important to result in the end result of zero.